From copper to steel and everything in between, his mastery of metal makes him a valuable asset to any dealer. And today, Shere Khan is about to arrive with a new project. So Shere Khan, he buys from everywhere. He buys from all over Europe, all over England, and so you never know what you're going to get. It, it could be anything. You right, Ted? Hello, Shere Khan. How are you doing? You dropped off a package for me? Yeah, weird thing. It is. Should have a look. You're going to love it. Really? You are, seriously. Well, it's, um, it's here. I'm slightly intrigued. Right. I know it looks old and rusty, and I know it, it looks old like, and rusty. And I know it looks like a weather vane. It is actually a lightning vane. And it would usually be on high buildings. You know, they'd have them on the on steeples of churches, instead of setting fire to the to the roof. This would um, attract the lightning, and it would disperse it. Invented by American founding father Benjamin Franklin in 1749, a lightning vane is designed to provide a safe path for electricity to travel from the roof of a building down into the ground without causing an electrical fire. They are still found on many buildings to this day, but this example dates back to the 18th century and likely originated from France. Years of being subjected to stormy weather have caused the metal to rust, and a base is needed if it's to be displayed as a decorative piece. What's, what's sort of your thoughts for it? So, um, don't want to lose the actual kind of aged look of it, yep. but it does need cleaning up because there's a lot of rust there and everything. And I think we need to do some sort of stand for it because obviously this ain't going to go back up on a roof or on a steeple. This is either going to go into a garden, I reckon, but then again, it could also go into a house as a decorative piece. Did you give a lot for it? A few hundred quid, a few hundred quid, but they're very fashionable at the moment. Right, There's okay. a time when people just threw these away. Now, honestly, people love them. I think this is one of those strange items where it's going to tell me what it wants. I've got to have a conversation with a 300-year-old piece of metal and uh, see where we're going to go. All right, mate. All right, Ted. I'll leave that with you. Good to see you. Take care. Cheerio. With Shere Khan gone, Ted gets straight to work planning how he's going to display the lightning vane on a bespoke stand. Now, my idea for this is to literally have it so almost like the top of a, a tower or a spire, been, just slice the top part off and then just put down. So what I want to do on the base here is create the very top part of a tower or a spire. Ted marks out an octagon onto a piece of wood, providing a template for the design of the spire. OK, last one. So that is going to be the, the actual base shape. The base shape will be formed from eight identical pieces of steel bar. Which are then arranged onto the template ready for welding. For the uprights of the spire, Ted uses round steel bar, which he passes through a machine called a ring roller to add a gentle curve. Do you know, that is the subtlest of bends. I reckon we'll go with that. Once the uprights are all welded into position, it's time to see if the lightning vane sits neatly on the base. Do you know what? That's going to look all right. Yeah, I like it. It's got. Uh, it's going to be a nice thing. The stand is coming together, but Ted has a way to go before this lightning vane is ready for all seasoning that has lost its spark. He's created a bespoke spire base 
by panelling an octagonal steel framework with copper sheeting, and now plans to add a traditional embellishment to sit proudly on top of the vane. It needs to have that little bit of more, give it a lift. We're going to put a big cockerel on the top. I want to go for quite a stylistic French cockerel rather than an English one. Ted sketches out the design for his cockerel, which is to be made out of copper, a material often found on roof decorations due to its malleability and resistance to rust. Right. That is the shape that we're after. It's the proportions that I'm interested in. It's the body and the tail. In order to accurately shape the two sides of the cockerel, Tad creates a former, a shaped block of wood, to dress the metal against. So we've got our two pieces of copper. These are the shape that we want, but they're oversized, because you have to allow, obviously, for the material that's going to wrap around our former that we got here. Now, what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to anneal these, which involves heating them up getting them red hot and then quenching them in some cold water. And what that does is it really softens the material, makes it really, really malleable. So that's now ready to go straight to the former and uh, we can start putting some shape into it. This is the fun bit. So we're just to start with, just going to pull it down, round, get it going. Go with that. That half the body. So now I've made one. I can unscrew the former, turn it over, do exactly the same as the other side, and then we'll have a mirrored pair, and then I can solder the two together, and we'll have the body of our cockerel. Fabricated the body of a copper cockerel to sit on top of the lightning vane. He's now turned his attention to creating a set of stylized feathers for the tail by putting raised lines into copper with a wheeling machine. Right, so what we have, we've got these two soft rubber wheels on the bottom. Now, what I need to do is literally just push it through following the lines around here. Now, it's quite hard work to do, but because of the rubber wheel, what it doesn't do is it doesn't, you don't get any sharp edges where the two get close. <sighs> I do use the wheelie machine quite a bit. It's like probably...
a Georgian lightning vane that had seen one too many stormy days, has proved a stern test of Ted's skill and creativity. Today, dealer Shere Khan is back in Dorset to see the finished piece. See, the thing is with Shere Khan is what you see is what you get. It's, it's like he is completely heart on sleeve. If he doesn't like it, you'll know. If he does like it, you'll also know. Oh, my God. Wow, Tim. <laughs> Wow! That's what I'm talking about, man. That is... It's out of this world, Ted. It's absolutely out of this world. My God! Wow! The rooster. It's like you just cut it off the top of a roof. That's what the intention was. Oh, Ted, you've done a job here, mate. When Ted first received this wrought iron lightning vane, it was one step away from scrap metal, covered in rust and completely unable to support itself. He has built a stunning spire-shaped base out of steel and copper panelling that elegantly holds the vane aloft. It's topped with a bespoke French cockerel that shows the direction of wind travel and adds a further layer of panache to this incredible piece of metal sculpture. Talk me through it, Ted. What have you done? Right. Obviously, you gave me this bit. I gave you the lightning vein. And you said to me you wanted a stand for it. Because it's a lightning vein from the top of a building, I thought, well, OK, let's do like it's the top of a yeah. building that I've just literally gone, whoop, sliced it off. It also gives you that kind of nice shape right, rising up out of the ground. Then we come to our friendly fellow on the top. Yeah. Here. That rooster looks absolutely amazing. Fantastic. This comes out of the realms of just the restoration. This, this is now a piece of art. After you're long gone and buried, <laughs> this is still going to be standing, Ted, and, and it's going to be a piece of art. They're going to say, Ted did this, she can't sold it to me. <laughs> and it's a piece of art. I mean, I could, honestly, I, I'm, 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 I could ask 10 grand for this. Yeah. It, it, it's absolutely amazing. I'm, I am genuinely speechless. I, I got a slight hint that he might have quite liked it. I think it was when he started shouting. <laughs> Again, fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome, I will mate. see you soon. So there you go. You see it again. You bring Ted just a piece of rusty metal and he turns it into something amazing.
For the uprights of the spire, Ted uses round steel bar, which he passes through a machine called a ring roller to add a gentle curve. Do you know, that is the subtlest of bends. I reckon we'll go with that. Once the uprights are all welded into position, it's time to see if the lightning vane sits neatly on the base. Do you know what? That's going to look all right. Yeah, I like it. It's got, uh, it's going to be a nice thing. The stand is coming together, but Ted has a way to go before this lightning vane is ready for all seasoning that has lost its spark. He's created a bespoke spire base by panelling an octagonal steel framework with copper sheeting, and now plans to add a traditional embellishment to sit proudly on top of the vane. It needs to have that little bit of more. Give it a lift. We're going to put a big cockerel on the top. I want to go for quite a stylistic French cockerel rather than an English one. Ted sketches out the design for his cockerel, which is to be made out of copper, a material often found on roof decorations due to its malleability and resistance to rust. Right. That is the shape that we're after. It's the proportions that I'm interested in. It's the body and the tail. In order to accurately shape the two sides of the cockerel, Tad creates a former, a shaped...